Shalawa, Malawa, you know, we steady water, man. You know, we gonna be steady water. You know, there's always this energy, you know what I mean, that that we can depend on to have a little more clarity, you know what I mean? Ain't nobody got all the answers. Ain't nobody got all the drop, you know what I mean? So all we got together, man, is an opportunity to drive up, man. Let's talk about it, man. Let's get into it. Try to make this a quick drive, man, but this is some real, this some real shit we're about to be talking about. I mean, this drive right here, yeah, man, yeah. I mean, you, we talking entomology, entomology, man. We're going to talk about weaponized insects, you know what I mean? Get into this FEMA drive here, talk about the black path towards martial law, you know what I mean? Then we got this great link, you know, to dig on with the HR2881. Love to the, uh, love to my aqua. Uh, I always call it 777 Showtime. You know what I'm saying? But love to you, sister. You know what I mean? Just for all the great drop. She's been, you know, serving to the tribe, man. Serving to the tribe. Let's go. Where we at? Where we at? All right. All right. I love to my bro. Um, uh, I want to say, uh, Jay Huber. Jay Hubbard. Jay Huber. Love to you, bro, as well. And all y'all in Drop Nation, man, Ether Squad, make sure you tuning in. Got the app. Uh, some folks been saying that the new uh, Apple phone or, or iPhone got an issue with the app, or the app got an issue with the new iPhone. So you know, I'm over here. You know what I mean? Seeing who's got the drop, man. You know what I mean? Uh, emailing folks. Hopefully we can get a solution to that real quick, man. But uh, yeah, man. Either way, tune in at four three two to Drop dot com. And that's where we'll keep it flowing as long as we can keep it flowing. And AI to all the real ones, man, for contributing, man. All my contributors, all the dragons on the wall for making this possible. So that they can be in their own quarantine or whatever the case is. And we can just focus on quarantining ourselves, man. Sanctifying ourselves. Because they found us in a quarantine. Y'all found us in a quarantine. <laughs> we was already quarantined off from y'all hijacks, man. Quarantining, you know, of course we know that etymology of the word is, is is real funny stuff. You got ships and ships that can't get to the land, but now they act like um, this is all the sea, right? They act like all oh, this is the sea because they got the sea law, admiralty law. It all connects because we're talking martial law, black path towards martial law. Pull up the links below. A hop to the rooms. Let go. Man, matter of fact, before I even do that, I want to uh, give A hop to to my contributors out there and you know i'm just gonna kind of surf the wave i got my uh i got my uh, paypal app up man everyone who's been you know either supporting the frequency of learning i'm gonna do a whole drop on the frequency of learning so y'all know that while this quarantine sit kickback go on we have a program that calms down your children that puts the house in a relaxing vibration called frequency of learning and uh, i'm about to Rebuild all the suites in there. Everybody's been real patient with me. So it's going to be a lot of different music, harp music, violins, you know what I'm saying? Dolphin sounds, all kind of fun things for the children. They can choose their own playlist. And then it's a bunch of different brain activation games. So it's like, you know, music and games, music and games. And, and we do customized suites for families, home homeschoolers that want their own uh, pictures up, you know, want their own specific music, specific playlist. So, you know, hit up frequencyoflearning.com. But I'm going to do a whole special and a whole new rollout on it. So just look forward to that. But everybody who's supporting that, the Drop Tuner Package, uh, $5 gets you 50 songs tuned up every month. Just send 50 songs, MP3s. We tune them up, send them back to you. Only $5 a month. Stuff like that keeps the lights on for us, man. And uh, uh, a few of y'all still been buying uh, the, the shirts and the and the hoodies and the hats and all that. And a hop to all the contributors all throughout the way, all all throughout the years, you know what I'm saying, that's been supporting the drop merch, man. So right now, the print shop is, uh, I guess, on quarantine clothes. So just hold off right now on the orders. You know what I mean? I'll let you know when it's safe to order, order again. If you have already ordered, then either, you know what I'm saying, you want to, you know, wait for that or we can send you something else. But definitely email us, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll make sure we're in contact with you as well. You know, everybody get what they need, man. Maybe send y'all some books or something. Maybe drop some books on y'all instead, man. So everybody trying to contribute, everybody doing their thing. I'm going to give a few shout out from the PayPal, man. Uh, and all the all the links are right below. So hit it up. A-Hop, A-Hop. 
We got, uh, oh, there we go. A hop to uh, Amira, Home Care, Teresa Martin, Robert Salazar, uh, the Green Cleaning Service, uh, Robert, uh, I said Robert Salazar, uh, Jacob Greenway, Kyle Jones, Alicia Cohen, Kawan, uh, Richard Whitaker, man, my, my bro Tech, love to Yosef the Real, man, David Mack, Damian Renwick. Uh, I think I think the family, you ordered a couple of hoodies or hoodie and a hat. So, yeah, I'll be in contact to make sure you get either something else or, you know what I mean, we'll, we'll just hook you up, man. It'd be all good, man. I appreciate all the contribution. Uh, Zendos, Devote Food, man. Uh, Sister Renana, what it do always, man. Sister Ty, what it do. David Abreu, Cedric Philippot, Marvin Bell, Robert Brown, Con Fresco, what it do, man. Uh, Kajela, Kajela Holmes, Kajela Holmes, hope I'm saying it right. My sister Clemmy, a uh, Anthony Campbell, yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know I mean, Nicholas Garrett, Yolanda Clue, yeah, you know I mean, just to name a few. We got some anonymous family out there that always gives the contributions, hey, hi to the family, and all that. You know, it's 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 amazing, man, what a, a little contribution can do, just to you know take care of a few things that we got, you know, to take care of, man, and just keep the water flowing and have some level of comfort while we do it. So. That's the vision, not just for me, but for the whole Ether Squad. You know what I'm saying? So you've been contributing on our Dragon Sponsors. We've been breaking bread with the Ether Squad, man, for years now. So they've been able to, you know what I'm saying, maneuver and save up their flow, man, and do their thing. So it all counts, man. It's all relative. And y'all been dropping on the Cash App. Let's get that, and then we're going to get into this black path towards martial law. All right? All the family, man, all the, all the contributors, on the cash yeah. Hold on, man. I'll pull this up. All right. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Hold on, man. I'm having a having a drop moment. Forgot how to pull up my activities, man. How I get the activities up. Man, hold up, man. Hold up. Man. Okay, okay, okay. Woo! Woo! It's not even hard, man. I was just having one of the moments, man. Must be that 5G, man. <laughs> Must be that 5G, man, and that brain activity. We're we going to talk about it, man. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's all happening, man. It's all happening. Like I said, man, they, they cut a tree down. They cut a tree down right in front of my house, man. Not right in front, but the one next door. Beautiful tree. And I just figured out the other day, you know, or yesterday, uh, it just, uh, for some reason, it all kind of just being, because for them, you know, they just hacked this tree down, just hacked it, man, just hacked it. Beautiful tree, just hacked it down. And my kids, is, my children are watching, it's just hearts are breaking while they just hacking this tree down. And we can't even figure out why they did all that, man. Even to the stump, they came back and grinded up the stump and spread it all over you know, the front. Like, and then I look up and way past the tree, you know, through the tree line, you know, not too far though, not too far. In between a couple of telephone poles, between that, I see that five G though, you know, I see that five G tower, and I say, you know. Like you hear about, you know what I'm saying, you know, folks, you know what I'm saying, being, you know, literally, you know, targeted or whatever case it is. You know, of course, you know, we all targeted, you know what I'm saying? We we've been targeted, man. We on a war path, man, you know. But they cut this, they cut that one down because that was blocking the path of this direct line, man, between this 5G and and, and, and right into my spot, man. I was like, oh. So look, man, you know, it's a frequency war, man. You know what I'm saying? We we got to charge up. I, I got my Citron. I'd love to see Jay. He wrapped this for me, man. We found a copper chain, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I've uh, been charging up, man. Keep it keep it right on my heart bone, man. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what we own. You know what I'm saying? We just talked about them 5G grids and all that. So, all right, man, shout out to the family dropping on the cash app. Again, all that keeps the lights on right here, man. Keeps the water flowing for us, and we truly a hive you, uh, Jory and Gillian, a hive, a hive. 
Fuck, man. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> Jordy and Gilly and uh, Deidre. My sister Deidre. Hey, hi, sister Deidre. Uh, man. Uh, Jerokee Strickland. Hey, hi. Shyla and Aunt Andre Tosh. Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Portia. My sister Portia. Uh, by any means necessary. Hey, hi. My sister Kelvin York. Hey, hi. Tom Fresh, man, he's all over the place, man. Kai Beretta, hey, hi, my sister. Donna Bond, hey, hi, I'm always keeping the water flowing. My bro Tech, man, everywhere, man, hey, hi, man. Let's see, let's see, man, get a couple more. Man, my sister uh, Nina Falan, hey, hi, my brother Mikael Sanders, a hey, uh, one more man, Kenneth Bonnie, man, KB, Brandon Rockwell, my jigger, a hey, uh, man, my bro Jonathan, Jonathan, Jose, uh, 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 I'm about to say, uh, Jose, <laughs> Yosef the real, man, about to say, uh, Jose, Yosef, Yosef the real, man, a hey, uh, man, CJ Battle, man, it's all over the place, Joy German, Jero, Jero Calderon, Derek Gilbert. Hey, hi, man, all the family, man. So that's just, you know what I'm saying, throughout the months, man. And and uh, especially in times like this, it's special, special, hey, hi, man, to know, you know what I mean, that, that we're being thought about, that y'all want to keep the lights on for us. So let's go, man. Let's keep the AI flow, man. The black path towards martial law. Let's get it. Now, this is uh, very important. Because right now we're in what's called a national emergency. So what happens when there's a, a national emergency? Let's read it together. Black path. Black path, my naga. You know what black means, right? Atrociously wicked. So this is the atrociously wicked path towards martial law. Let's go. Emergency is the trigger word in the FEMA title. The director of FEMA shall, on behalf of the president, one, coordinate all mobilization activities of the executive branch. Anything moving around the executive branch is now coordinated by FEMA. So when you see that FEMA dude standing next to Trump, that's what's calling the shots right now because this is a national emergency. Con. When is a national emergency? You know, everyone keep talking about Trump doing this, and Trump's thinking about that. Nah, man, Trump, his his, his presidential powers is pushed to the side. This is a national emergency. I mean, if it's a national emergency, I'm seeing folks. Uh, I don't know if you're on IG. If you go with the hashtag, uh, uh, film your hospital, and you know, people are going around filming their hospitals, like the one out here in LA, Cedar Sinai. Uh, you know. Uh, St. St. John's Hospital, different different big hospitals, and there's nobody there. It's like a ghost town. It's like how's it gonna be a huge breakout epidemic, and there ain't nobody in these hospitals, man. Maybe we'll get some of that for the dismount. Love to the bro Sundown Nine Spiral, who's over there at IG, man, just slaying. He he's a hijack slayer, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bodies, <laughs> Bodies, man. Body bags, man. So let's go. The director of FEMA shall, on behalf of the president, coordinate all mobilization activities of the executive branch, including production, procurement, manpower, stabilization, and transport. FEMA will be able to alter any existing contract, my So, all right, so think about the existing contracts. Think about all, think about the Constitution, you know what I'm saying? Think about all the existing contracts. Now, the Federal Reserve System, with all its branches, will become fiscal agent to the United States <laughs> with dictatorial power over the economy of the nation. Dictatorial power goes to the Federal Reserve System. Who's that? How do you elect those guys, right? How do you get that drop going? The Treasury and the Export-Import Bank will be authorized to make loans under the direction of FEMA and, and the Federal Reserve System. So they got the Treasury as soon as there's a national emergency. This is, a, this is the path towards martial law. 
I mean, in this case, martial law ain't even been declared yet. Hold up, man. Let me get my Zion flow. Let me get my Zion flow. Oh, man. Come on, man. Hijack is never late, man. That's what you realize, man. Let me get my Zion flow. Because we're going to need this 432, man. I'm in this uh, nice little positive uh, energy relaxation flow. Let's just get some of that. Wow. All right. Slow down. Slow down, man. It's only the wave, man. Ain't no time. All right. The Federal Reserve System now has dictatorial power, dictatorial power over the economy. The Treasury and the Export Import Bank will be authorized to make loans under the direction of FEMA and the Federal Reserve System. All right, during a national emergency, this is what we're talking about, right? So right now, we're in a national emergency. The president, an elected official, <laughs> right? That's the president, president of a corporation, right? Uh, that's kind of interesting. I didn't mean to hit that, but that's a nice little close-up on it. Let's go. <laughs> So the president, an elected official, will be stripped of all his presidential functions. So when he's standing up there talking, technically, because we're in a national emergency, this ain't even martial law yet, right? I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it is. You know, we just don't know it. I mean, basically it is, you know. <laughs> basically it is, you know what I mean? But it's not announced. This is just the black path. <laughs> this is just the wicked path. So during a national emergency, the president is stripped of all presidential functions. Just 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 pause on that for a second. All presidential functions. So what are we talking about? Why even take the podium? Because most people don't know that he doesn't have any presidential function at this moment. So it's not about what he's doing. It's what they're doing. Because it's a national emergency. Set up an executive branch of the government. Number five, and the National Defense Executive Reserve, NDER. It's a National Defense Executive Reserve, whatever that means, man. Composed of persons selected, not elected, from various segments of the civilian economy and from government for training for employment and executive positions in the event of a national emergency. All right, such reservists have been treasonally exempted from certain provisions of the Federal Criminal Code and may be employed, quote, without compensation, shanghai or blackmailed into service. And we got a lot of reserves, talking about reservists. We got a lot of reserves now being called into action. Right? But the hospitals are empty, but there's a crisis. His bodies everywhere, but the hospitals are more empty than they ever been. So if there are a bunch of bodies, which hospital are they going to? I'm talking about the common people who will be like, oh, shit, I'm so sick. I need help. They're not going to go to some magic hospital. They're going to go to uh, Sentinella Hospital, Kaiser, Cedar sinai You know, if you're in my area, Martin Luther King, shit, they're going to go somewhere. 
They're not going to go to the secret hospital. So where are they? Why are the hospitals empty? Y'all go check out your hospitals, man. Let's, you know what I mean? May, maybe drop tripping. May, maybe there's an epidemic at your hospital. But if there's not an epidemic at your damn hospital, then how the fuck is there an epidemic? Ain't that the first place people go when they're sick, man? Let me write this down. Make sure I get some of this sundown nine spiral for the dismount, man. Make sure I get some of this sundown nine spiral for the dismount. Love to the bro. Love to yourself, man. You know, they've been doing great music, man. We got a lot more coming, man. A lot more for the tribe. Tribal flow, tribal music. We doing it, man. Four, three, two. All right, number six, seize or control every major national asset. So FEMA now controls every major national asset. Seven, provide for national security and consolidate the assignment of emergency preparedness functions with various departments and agencies. Eight, the Department of Justice shall develop plans for administering laws regarding the import, manufacture, and distribution of narcotics, i.e. do anything it wants relative to narcotics. So FEMA controls the treasury. FEMA controls narcotics. FEMA consume, assumes all presidential functions. So who the fuck? So who's FEMA? I mean, well, I, I know they were started under uh, the Carter administration, right? So... Behind, the, I mean, behind the veil, who's who? You know, I know, I know the roles they play in the theater, but behind the veil, who's who? And remember, my nine, that behind the veil, you have allies too. That's why you can't demonize everything that you think is Masonic or demonic, because within the Masons, there are allies. There are allies. There are people that. A wise put in position, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I don't care what fraternity, what sorority, what uh, Phi Beta, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you, within that, you have allies. They're not all demon, Masonic, you know what I'm saying? Devil worshippers, you know what I mean? So that's why you got to be, you know, careful how you flow, especially to the young kids, you know, 17, 18, that, you know, are just, you know, doing what they think is, you know, the next step to popularity or whatever. Okay. Don't demonize them because they can be your ally. You know, these are some of the smartest, brightest, strongest, you know, saying, uh, you know, young Judah, young Ephraim, all that in these colleges, you know what I'm saying? They're they making decisions at an 18 year old perspective, man. Don't demonize them. Just show them the way, you know what I'm saying? Or else, you know what I'm saying? Now you got, confrontation for no reason when you can just show them the way they're willing to learn they woke they're waking up like just show them the way so even behind the veil we got allies so you know i want you to have the full 360 perspective about all this stuff not all masons are bad not all this is bad not all that is bad not all this is good not all people that say surf the wave are my allies, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it all takes a dragonfly perspective, man. Allow what? Uh, number seven, provide for national security and consolidate the assignment of emergency preparedness. We keep hearing about emergency preparedness month, all this stuff. All right, here we go. <laughs> Number eight, the Department of Justice shall develop plans for administering laws regarding the import, manufacture, distribution of narcotics. And now here we go. FEMA got the narcotics. Number nine, declare martial law at any time. So if it's going to come from anybody, it's not. The president might play the role of announcing it, but whoever declares it will be through FEMA. And of course, all that's a theater as well, man. So. You know, these are all titles and, and, and whatever they call themselves really behind closed doors is, is, is what they call themselves. But that's how, you know, they're going to declare it. And it's going to come through someone in this organization. Have the Department of Interior take over all potable water. So here they go. Control your water. 
place all food production under the Department of Agriculture. So they got your food, they got your water, martial laws declared by them. They got the treasury, they got the narcotics. <laughs> they got all presidential functions. Take over all labor resources by means of lists already prepared by the Department of Labor. Implement takeover of all forms of transportation by the Department of Transportation Assist, assisted by the Civil Aeronautics Board. Implement takeover of all nuclear. They got the they got the they got their hand on a button now for the for the nukes. Now they got the nukes. FEMA. Now all we got to really go off of, you know, if we look at a resume, is Hurricane Katrina in terms of a disaster that our people was related to and we see that we were treated, uh, you know, far worse, you know what I'm saying, than human, you know what I mean? So I don't think shit's changed. If that, if I'm looking at the resume, you know, if my eyes are, are, are not deceiving me, you know what I'm saying? Um, so they're going to take over tra transportation, take over the nukes. Number 15, take over authority and presidential functions. In case you didn't hear it the first time. Take over authority and presidential functions of all emergency agencies and reduce the consequences of major terrorist incidents case case and list some examples of the perpetuation of silent coup. You tell me. For example, declaring certain areas to be military reserves and cause American citizens to be removed from their homes. My nigga, I just want you to take a glimpse into the future, you know, at least if they have it their way, right? So they're taking over the authority and the presidential functions of all emergency agencies. They're reducing the consequence of major terrorist incidents, even though they themselves are creating the terror, right? Now, they have the authority to declare certain areas to be military reserves. So they can say, all right, this part of L.A., it's now for military reserves. All you guys on Slauson and Crenshaw, all all from Crenshaw to Imperial, all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all this is now a military reserve. And then what? Remove the citizens from their homes and imprison without trial under the pretense of racial difference or whatever they want to be the pretense. You know what I mean? We're just reading documents here for scholarship research purposes you know we're, we're coming with an unbiased viewpoint it's just that it's all happening and all it takes is a little bit of observation because when we talk science it's about being repeatable and observable Monaco. <laughs> repeatable and observable science and if you look at the science FEMA or any of this stuff, any of this stuff, any of this, you know what I'm saying, uh, alphabet corporate jargon. When you look at the science of it, it's repeatable and observable. The wickedness, the slaughter, the heartlessness is repeatable and observable. So you want us to change our perspective when all we got is what we got. And that's all we're going to get. This is redemption season, man. This is our harvest time, man. Shabbat Shalom, Baruch Pasak, man. Happy Passover to the tribe. Whether you are, are honoring that week this week or last week or two weeks ago, uh, Chef Caddy and I, I think we're going to honor uh, or we plan on honoring the week of uh, uh, April 10th through the 17th. So that's next week. For us, that's when we're going to, you know, honor the Basak for our family, man. So if you uh, haven't done it yet, man, you know, just want to rock in our flow. We appreciate you, man, for the energy, man. April 10th through April 17th. For no, I ain't got no super reason, you know, for that particular day. It's just that, you know, that's that's going to flow for us. You know, nobody knows the days. Nobody knows, you know, even people try to know, still don't know. You know what I mean? So. You know, as long as, as long as we around this time and, you know what I'm saying, we are uh, in observance, man. You know what I'm saying? We're being obedient children, man. So uh, if you already have honored the Passat, 
rock with us too. You know what I mean? Have another week of yeast free, unleavened bread, you know, yeast free, man. So Baruch Basak. Yeah, man. So you heard it, man. Military reserves. They're going to declare certain areas to be military reserves and cause American citizens to be removed from their homes and imprisoned without trial under the pretense of racial difference. Another code provides that the military commander under FEMA can, under the color of a national emergency, specify any area he deserves as a military reserve and designate anyone living there as a criminal. When martial law is declared, the Constitution is no longer the law of the land. Well, it ain't. It, it ain't never been a law of our land, you know what I'm saying? We already know. It is revoked and replaced with what amounts to military dictatorship because they're a word about constitution to them is like the law of the creator to us. But since we have lost sight of the law of the creator, we hang on to what they hang on to because we are now the tail, so we follow everything they do. You know, they stole the whole Declaration of Independence, really, all that. All that from the Iroquois, man. All, all that from the indigenous constitution, confederates that were already confederate right here. The Amaru Kaz, the Amaru Khan. The debate over martial law has been around for a long time. The Department of Defense recognizes that within our constitution, there is a question of lawfulness if the military is ordered to declare martial law over the citizens of the United States. This debate became extensive during the early days of the federal management FEMA right, while it was being developed in, in California by Governor Ronald Reagan and his advisor, Edwin Meese. So you could research more on you know, what popped off with FEMA and all that. Then it gets into garden plot and some other Rex 84 programs, right? Rex 84 programs. We've been digging on Rex 84 and all this is connected. Obviously, man. Obviously, man. Obviously connected. I'll make sure I leave this link as well. Cool, man. Let's kick it off like this. All right. King Alfred's plan. Rex 84. So, you know, we didn't went through this before. Code name. Rex 84. In the event of a widespread continuing and coordinated racial disturbance. All right. So this is going to get real racial real fast. Just watch how they start spinning stuff. Oh, the looters are this. The looting, the looting. Right. King Alfred at the discretion of the president is to be put into action immediately. So combine this with the FEMA emergency situation, we just got the black path to martial law. Now you're in the full situation that we're not pumping it out, you know what I'm saying, just to pump fear, right? Obviously, that's what's really happening. <laughs> you know, you don't have to see tanks rolling down your street right now to know that, okay, everybody's getting in position. And, it, and they can say everything's back to normal tomorrow, man. And everybody can go back to school and work. And it's all good. Please understand. If this is an exercise, they're practicing for something. <laughs> they're not practicing for nothing. They see how much control they can have so fast. Oh, shit. The corona now has the, done a super backflip. Now everybody got it. But I think the end game is the vaccine, man. I think they want to scare you so much that you want that vaccine, man. And that's the end game. So many people are now going to hate you because you don't got the vaccine. And then that outbreak from the vaccine is going to be ridiculous because that's the vaccine is the virus. So, you know, by the time that vaccine come out, you, you pretty much want to be situated, you know, what I'm saying outside of uh, outside of too much chaos, man, for real. You know, what I'm saying. I think Bill Gates said it might be 18 months, 18 months to get a vaccine. So maybe you got that long, maybe not. But, you know, if you can start getting situated now, you know, I definitely suggest, you know, that particular journey. You know, none of us really know, 
exactly where the creator's taking us, you know, and, and and what's 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 awaiting us at the other side of these steps we have to take. But our families have been had to exodus and make moves, and do whatever for our family. A lot of us, either you're in California, but your family's from New York. At some point, they exodus to New York for whatever reason, you know. I mean, from from New York to California, or from the from the Bahamas, you know, to to Texas, or from Texas to Sweden, you know, wherever you end up at, wherever you at, Germany to here, this is another one of them times, you know, it's looking like, you know, that, you know, if you just, before we're getting out of town for a better job opportunity, you might want to get out of town for a better survival opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Wakey, wakey, man. Get out that 5G for sure and just, you know, go with the flow, man. And, you know, just, just, just watch the creator work, you know what I mean? But, you know, use discernment, use wisdom, be prayed up, and uh, again, just 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 be airtight with Hawa, man. Right now, just be airtight with your creator. You know, if, if that's all you get from anything I've ever said, we've ever said, man, tribe up, man. Be airtight with your creator, man. The tribe up is to be one with the creator, Hawa, and all the seeds and the and the brothers and sisters in the flow, man. So, you got this drop. I'll just leave it for you. You go dig on it, you know. These are all the regions that they're gridding off, saying that they're going to round up all the Nagas, man. All the minorities, man. They got all the minority organizations listed, right? Now, this is back then, so who will be on this list today? <laughs> right? I wonder. I wonder, man. And then they had their countdown, man. And, you know, Local police and minorities, leaders in action, head off the emergency. Then they start counting down. Eighth hour all the way down to zero hour. President addresses minority. So a lot of this is about you. And we keep telling you this whole thing's about you. So if you start making moves out to cities, that's going to be real confusing for them. You know what I'm saying? If you stay in the cities, it's easier for them to, you know, whatever. But, you know what I'm saying? This could be a test, right? But I don't like... I don't, I ain't no betting man, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I don't like to bet on it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when uh this type of energy has this type of chokehold this quickly, I mean, everything shut down, sports, entertainment. Then, of course, you got stuff going on behind the scenes that we're going to get at as well, man. Love to the tribe. Y'all been sending in a lot of drop, man. Y'all been sending it in. Uh, pull up this link, HR2881. Again, love to the bro. Hope I'm saying your name right, Jay Hubbard. You know what I mean? Hope I'm saying that right. If not, Shalaka, you know who you are, Aha, brother. Oh, uh, man. So, Secure 5G and Beyond Act of 2020. Yeah. You know, I don't remember them doing no politics behind 4G like that or 3G. I mean, maybe they did. We just didn't pay attention, but... They sure are getting real political over this 5G to secure it. That means that other folks must be fighting against it, even behind the scenes, even behind the veil where we have allies. We have allies, my knock. Believe it. So what is this uh, HR 2881-116 one, Congress just passed this year, January 8th? It's also called the Secure 5G and Beyond Act of 2020. This bill requires the president in consultation with relevant federal agencies like who? Like who, my Oh. Right, because FEMA during a national emergency the president will be stripped of all presidential functions. Now, FEMA <laughs> takes over the authority and the presidential functions of all emergency agencies. HR 2881. Now we can decipher this stuff, right? This bill requires the president in consul consultation or confederation with relevant federal agencies, right? Agencies, agencies, emergency agencies. FEMA is 
Federal Emergency Agency We're just talking HR 2A81 that just passed and we're just talking 5G What's with this 5G and why's it got everything to do with FEMA? <laughs> and the Roni, right? The Tenderoni virus. This bill requires the president who's no longer has his power. Now that's with the federal agencies to develop a strategy to secure and protect U.S. fifth and future generations. 5G systems, infrastructure. So they can go through any measure to now protect the 5G grid. Because people going to want to tear this shit apart. People going to want to tear it down, right? But they can go through any measure now to protect it. They can have a strategy to secure it. That's why they're securing it. Because you're going to want to tear it down, my nigga. But now they're going to say, oh, well, this bill requires the president in consultation with the relevant federal agencies to develop a strategy to secure and protect the U.S. fifth and future generations 5G systems and infrastructure and an impl implementation plan for the strategy. Such strategies shall ensure the security of 5G wireless communication systems and infrastructure within the United States. Assist mutual defense treaty allies, strategic partners, what does all this got to do with 5G? What strategic defense allies? I thought this was for faster phone service, faster streaming. Why does it got to do with military treaties, strategic partners? What's it got to do with the security of 5G systems? I thought I was getting faster net, man. Why are you protecting the infrastructure? So you dig on this HR 2A81, and why are they securing 5G? Remember, you all gridded up. They got us all gridded up. You know, go get that last drop with the 5G grid. Dodge the grid. And now we're going to get the fun part. I'm just going to lead you to the water. Get a couple pages of this. Now, this is uh, an article or really a, a dissertation, a 10, a ten page, uh, you know, thought process <laughs> of Thomas F. Moore, man. Who's Thomas F. Moore? Who's Thomas F. Moore? Let's get it bigger. Thomas F. Moore is the chief of staff of the United States Army Nuclear CWMD, something about weapons of mass destruction agency, received a master's degree from, in, he received a master's degree in weapons of mass destruction studies. So he's all about weapons of mass destruction <laughs> as a national defense university countering weapons of mass destruction graduate fellow. He went to grad school <laughs> all about this weapon of mass destruction. So he he know a little bit about these delivery systems. And we're going to talk a little bit about entomology. We're going to do a nice little dismount on this entomology. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then we got a nice, we're going to do a nice little double dismount, man. Let's do it, man. Entomology. What is entomology? Entomology, meaning insect, study of insects, scientific study of insects, a branch of zoology, and all that other stuff. Okay, 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 okay. We're just talking insects. Entomology. Pull up all these links, man. Get this drop. <laughs> so this is Mr. Super W Weapons of Mass Destruction Superman. All right. Let's get the first couple paragraphs. And then we're going to really talk about weaponized biotech 
weaponized dragonflies, my naga. Weaponized dragonflies. Yeah, I said it. Biological weapons, man. And they said they have the drones, you know, like they got the many little insect drones, but they've been weaponizing insects like fruit flies, my naga, like, you know, I'm saying bumblebees, roaches, dragonflies, you know, every all this stuff. They've been weaponizing it really since the 30s. They're going to talk about that a little bit. So this is if they, they've been doing this for 80, 90 years. So if they started doing it in World War One and World War Two, weaponizing lice, charging them up with all kind of shit <laughs> and, and, and using them as weapons. And now they're controlling the actual neural system, you know what I'm saying? The neurological pathway. They're tapping into the neurological pathway and they're breaking the knock down and they're breaking the dragonfly down. And now they can now fly the dragonfly. They can control the, the flight of the dragonfly by breaking into the neurological system, man. So let's go. Although states have used a variety of systems to, de to deliver weapons of mass destruction, WMD, we are in fact surrounded by practically ubiquitous delivery vehicles for WMD insects. For example, states have worked to seize the benefits of these load-bearing bugs in the past, investing in programs that can leverage the unique benefits they afford. Insects are ideal delivery devices for launching a state-sponsored biological weapons attack and present an attractive option over mechanical delivery vehicles because they are readily available, effective, and difficult to attribute. This article argues that the U.S. interagency, listen up, the U.S. interagency consider insects as potential biological weapons of mass destruction delivery vehicle capable of harming U.S. citizens in agriculture. Maybe you missed what Thomas Moore just, just said. Maybe you missed what he just laid out. Maybe you missed the whole thesis of what's behind why he's writing this article. Listen to why he says he's writing it and what he wants them to consider. Not consider the harmful effect of it, but to actually consider doing. Alright? Because he got his master's and PhD in weapons of mass destruction, WMDs. This article argues that the U.S. interagency consider insects as potential biological weapons of mass destruction delivery vehicles. He's saying I'm arguing that the U.S. interagency consider these insects as weapons of mass destruction vehicles capable of harming U.S. citizens. So he wants them to use this to harm U.S. citizens and agriculture. Same thing as when they came here, burning down your cornfields. They want to destroy your agriculture. They want to destroy you. In this article, I first described the benefits of insects as delivery devices for biological agents and discuss the advantages they provide over traditional traditional mechanical delivery devices. Next, I provide a brief history history of five states, all signatories to the Biological Weapons Convention, BWC, and their efforts to develop entomological study of insects, warfare programs. Third, I discuss contemporary threats and highlight recent advances in biotechnology that exacerbate the threat of biological weapons today. Finally, I recommend that the interagency obtain a comprehensive understanding of why states might be incentivized, incentivized or just given incentives to conduct an entomological attack. So how can we give them incentives to to weaponize insects by not? I, you know, what I mean, and, you know, you you look into the reasons why they say insects cost nothing and are abundant. They are. They also serve as particularly effective hosts to disease. Many pathogens are not suited to live outside of a host because of environmental factors such as ultraviolet rays, temper, temperature extremes render their deadly potential ineffective by carrying the pathogens internally. Insects overcome this common obstacle of the 
the delivery of biological agents. So they said, oh, the coronavirus can't live, you know, more than however long outside the body. So, you know, just got to uh, quarantine, yada, yada, yada. However, these insects can carry the virus anywhere and keep it nice and warm and toasty, even in the cold or whatever the case is. Or excuse me, you know what I'm saying? You know, make it so that this, you know, it doesn't hit any temperature extremes, you know what I mean? Still carry these pathogens and overcome the common obstacle to deliver the biological agents, you know. However they work it out, they looking to work it out. They say they're creating, quote, natural weapons, but they put a quote unquote over natural because how can this be natural when these are straight up hijacks? And, you know, I'm just scrolling uh, through page number two here, as you see. You know what I mean, um, they're, you know, they're saying, oh, yeah, there's a good part right here. Let's get this part. Because this is some history of the 1930s and 1932. Let's back it up. During World War II, so we're talking WW2, General Ishu Shapiro or Shiro ran Japan's Epidemic Prevention Research Laboratory where his work focused on protecting soldiers from disease. Was he protecting them from disease or <laughs> and employing insects to induce epidemics? So are you inducing epidemics or are you protecting soldiers? How can you be both protecting soldiers while inducing an epidemic? You see how the devil works, right? In 1932, Shiro established Unit 731, where he mass-produced insects and weaponized them for use in an attack. Shiro enlisted Manchurian, Manchurian captives to weaponize fleas with pathogens, allowing Japan to produce a half-billion plague-infested fleas per year. They were... Biotaking the <laughs> biotaking the fleas, my nigga. Fleas, man. <laughs> All right, plague infested fleas. Nineteen forty, Shiro scientists developed a Type Fifty UG bomb, which could safely deliver thirty thousand fleas to the target. So this B O M B was delivering fleas, thirty thousand plague infested fleas per target. All right, at least. Japan refined this entomological weapon by conducting 4,000 tests. So 4,000 tests. That's over 4,000 times they bomb 30,000 fleas per target. You do the math at over 2,000 subjects, Manchurian subjects. Then they go on to the Hitler and doing it. You know, so, so they, you know, everybody's in on it, man. Everybody's in on the weapons of mass destruction using insects. But let's just see what they're doing to our dragonflies, man. And we're going to make a nice little double dismount here. Yeah, man. Even in 1943, President Franklin D. Roosevelt deviated from the Fox Doctrine. Look it up. That's a whole other drop right there. <laughs> Which came from a report drafted in 1932 suggesting the U.S. refrain from any development of biological weapons. So this Fox Doctrine was actually refraining the U.S. from the development of biological weapons. And started a reset. So, who, who dropped it? Who dropped this on their lap? You know what I'm saying? And started a research and development program at Camp Detrick. At Camp Detrick, Canadian and U.S. scientists collaborated to weaponize mosquitoes. So now we keep hearing about these mosquitoes spreading this, spreading that. They are weaponized, already plagued, dipped in the plague by the government. Why not? The U.S., right? Talk about the president weaponizing mosquitoes using several pathogens. By 1946, U.S. Secretary of War Robert Patterson had come to believe that the U.S. required a biological weapons retaliatory capability for potential use against the Soviet Union. As a result, the Camp Detrick operation grew and eventually would include 245 structures with over 5,000 workers. Was it play play? Their U.S. researchers determined, ex experimented with fruit flies and screw worms to determine their ability to destroy agriculture. Why even test your ability to destroy agriculture unless that's your war plan? And what was their war plan when they came to America? Destroy agriculture, spread disease, spread deadly 
pathogens, weaponize insects. Ain't nothing changed. They're blaming this for the Zika virus. They're blaming it for, for everything. That all this has been a weaponized game. Yellow fever. I mean, Spanish flu. I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? Last part we'll get is this, man. Because they are weaponizing the dragonfly. In 2016, engineers from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore found that controlling insect flight, controlling insect flight, controlling the insect flight had two advantages over using remote control drones. First, insects could, ex could access areas drones could not. Second, insects could control their own flight st stability without requiring constant flight corrections as drones do. In 2017, Managa, engineers at the Draper Company in Massachusetts combined miniaturized navigation, synthetic biology, and neurotechnology to control the flight in a dragonfly. They use navigation, miniaturized navigation, synthetic biology, and neurotechnology to control the flight of the dragonfly. The scientists use synthetic biology to modify the nervous system of the dragonfly so that they would respond to pulses of light. They inserted genetic material into the insect so that their neurons could either be activated or in inhibited by various colors of light. This represented a bold advance. So first, first they tapped into the nervous system. Right there in the motherboard, right? And they tapped it in and they chapped it up, like my bro Yosef say, so that they will respond to certain pulses of light. Then inserted genetic material. Shall I get uh genetic material into the insect so that their neurons could either be activated or inhibited by various colors of light. This represented a bold advance in harnessing the power of insects for spreading disease. Scientists can now control both guidance and navigational systems of insects outside of the laboratory setting. All right, there we go. So, they inserted genetic material into the insects so that their neurons could either be activated or inhibited by various colors. What is this color frequency? The spectrum, the light. Remember, the light is sound, so if they can control it with, you know, uh, you know, these colors, and they can also control with the spectrum or the frequency or the sound, you know what I mean? Sound is so important, so what what sound, what frequency is coming out these Gwen Towers, uh, 5G Towers, all this drop. Love again to Yosef Real, also doing great work. And again, we're going to do a great uh, a dismount with my bro, Sundown, Nine Spiral. This represented a bold advance in harnessing the power of insects for spreading disease. Scientists can now control both guidance and navigation. So you're going to look up, man, you know, if they have it their way. Down the line, you ain't going to know if you got a real dragonfly or a fake dragonfly. Because they're both going to have the same genetic material. But one's going to have synthetic biology. And this nervous system going to be tapped in. <laughs> and they're going to be literally guiding and navigating. And not just for spreading disease. I mean, think about all the other implications. Cameras, spying. How many times have flies come into your house? You know what I'm saying? So they ain't going to need no warrants. They just come in as a fly because they've been already hijacking beetles. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff. So in 2019, U.S. Army was successful in harnessing the flight of the giant flower beetle. They can tap into the nervous system of the flower beetle. Since the conclusion of the Human Genome Project, we researched that. It's a whole other drop an international scientific effort that mapped all the genes of the human genome. Scientists have identified over 4,000 kinds of DNA mutations that cause genetic disease. Genome editing or gene editing enables scientists to delete, add, or change DNA in the genome. So now not only can they 
modify or, you know what I'm saying, tap in or hijack the flight, but now they can now modify the genome of all these insects as well. Here we go. Whereas gene editing tools were once expensive and required the mastery of complex scientific techniques, new technologies, new technologies are altering this reality. The cluster. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the cluster regularly interspace short palindromic repeats too. For example, make sure I'm reading that right. It looks like they're going straight down here. All right, the material to resurrect the extinct horsepox for a cost under one hundred thousand dollars. The the state's intent on launching biological weapon attacks could replicate. Evans' methods to resurrect other pox viruses. Uh-oh, now we're talking viruses. Uh-oh. What, what has this got to do with the Roni? So they can resurrect whatever viruses based on spreading the disease by giving you fake dragonflies and fake beetles and fruit flies and all this stuff already, already, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know what I mean, hijack, you know what I mean, with the disease, but plus they're using the flight, they can hijack the navigation and, you know, do whatever they want with that. You know, they can be all up in your crib, all up in your bedroom, they can fly around your house like a fly, right? And then we see this in the movies, I'm sure they got some movies on this. Let's skip over here right quick, 2017 scientists at the University of California, Riverside use CRISPR- all right, this is their cluster regulatory interspace short palindromic repeats. Riverside used this CRISPR Cas9 to edit the genome of a mosquito and create a yellow three eyed wingless version. They gave the mosquito three eyes and no wings. While this research bodes well for scientists' ability to incapacitate mosquitoes to prevent the spread of infectious diseases, it also reveals how the genome code might also be corrupted to do harm to living organisms. Uh-oh. So you got the rest of this, man. I'm just saying, man, they are hijacking, hijacking. I mean, hijacking the dragonfly. They want to control the flight of the dragonfly. They want to tap into the neural system of the dragonfly, of the dracon. And when you scroll down, you're going to see many more connections with this weapons of mass destruction scenario and this entomological warfare. Critics wary of whether entomological warfare is truly a rise, a rising threat might argue that using insects as WMDs is foolish for two reasons. First, it would be unlikely for an entomological attack to achieve WMD effects. And second, an entomological attack would violate international norms and treaties such as the BWC. However, new technologies, as always new technologies and capabilities, including the ability to edit the genome of insects and drive certain genes, enable biological nightmare scenarios that far surpass any use of biological weapons seen today. This is what it's all about right here. Enable biological nightmare scenarios that far surpass any rise or any use of biological weapons seen to date. In particular, nefarious actors could conceivably purchase DNA, uh oh, <laughs> and use this CRISP right, to resurrect extinct viruses, viruses, and construct a variant of existing virus for which no known cure exists. We're searching for the vaccine, boss. No, this is COVID-19. This ain't Corona. This is a new variant of this existing virus in which no known cure exists. Body bag, Daniel. Oh, they got it through some type of bat situation. Really? Bat? Bat soup? Were they controlling bats? <laughs> the list goes on and on, and 
a lot of y'all been dropping this. Uh, I can't confirm or deny the validity of this. You know, I'm not pointing fingers at no one. I'm just sharing the recon that comes across the drop desk. And, you know, I'm just going to leave this for you. You can dig on it. I mean, it speaks for itself. You know, is this whole quarantine a cover up for this situation? You know, United States District Court, Southern California. You see this. Uh, AI organization. This is their info. You could look deeper into it. This is when the case is filed this year. Implementing, remember all this um, organ, you know what I'm saying? Harvesting. We're going to get back on a melanin situation so you know how much the melanin goes for, right? Over 400, damn near 500 a gram. $500 a gram, way more than gold, silver. So the organs harvest has everything to do with the melanin. You know what I mean? The the price of the melanin on the market and the highest concentrations of melanin within these organs, you dig? Because melanin is going for over 500 a gram, most expensive thing on earth. So these organs are big, big money. And there's trafficking, but it goes more than that, right? Because you know all this is happening. So whether this is a fake, uh, you know what I'm saying, brief, you know, of, of this, of this uh, you know, what you call it, uh, well, First Amendment complaint and demand for trial by judge, all right? So, it, you know, it, case, <laughs> I'm like looking for the word case. Is it a fake case or a real case? <laughs> all right, so even if it's a fake case, you know it's the real shit that's happening behind the veil and the sick, sadistic, you know, playing field that we're, you know, unfortunately on right now. So organ harvesting in China, uh-oh. I mean, is, is this a far-fetched situation or is this really happening with these particular players? I don't know, man. You do the recon, you let me know. But apparently everybody in on it. Everybody in on it. Everybody in on it. Everybody in on it, man. Everybody in on it. I mean, that might cause a shutdown. The banks, the, uh, you know. Entertainment shut down. You know what I'm saying? Everything's had to slow down. Everything had to, everything had to take a pause for the calls. The courts shut down. They got to take a call, a pause for the call. Everybody got to sort this situation out. Or, you know, it's nothing. It could be something. It could be nothing. You tell me, man. It's a lot more to it. This is an 87 page document. And again, you know, it got to be something because this is, a lot of what's been, you know, um, contributing to the whispers, you know, behind the scenes of the, you know, the the darkest, you know, most, again, sadistic, you know, just, you know, there's no words to describe this type of darkness, you know what I mean? But it's all happening. And we pray to a while to protect our families, our loved ones, little ones, um, you know, friends, everybody, so that, you know, we can... You know, really tribe up in real time because we're going to have to tribe up against, you know, this type of energy. You know what I'm saying? On a spiritual level, on a mental level, and on a physical level. So, you know, talk to your brothers and sisters around you, man. Communicate. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, pray for discernment on who to trust. Because you already know, man, they they active with their co and tail, right? So, you know, all this stuff is, you know, it's all vibration for us, man. And pray to Hawada. You know, keep the right ones around us and just, you know, keep us safe and protective, protected as we journey and just, you know, figure out the next moves, man. Next couple moves for ourselves, man. Remember, man, they're in Congress trying to secure the 5G and beyond. What's beyond that? <laughs> What's beyond, man? Hold up, hold up. Oh, yeah, actually, man, let's get this back. Let's get this back. Cause they, I saw something about 5G somewhere else. Dragonflies. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bio-digital. 
But he's talking about AI, right? Hans and Sophia, social programming of the human race by use of their biometrics, artificial intelligence, brainwashing humanity with AI coding, algorithm bias, cultural genocide by misuse of artificial intelligence, breach of implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing, defamation, negligent infliction of emotional distress, negligent negligent creation of nefarious AI quantum biotechnology. We just talked about them what weaponizing the dragonfly, right? And all insects, entomology, right? Cybernetically enhanced dragonflies. I can't make this shit up. Robo bees, micro insect drones, xenobots, xenobots, endangering all the world's people on 5G networks masking genocide with AI technology, fraud and inattention of deceit, negligent representation goes on and on, man. AI, AI, AI. Now, what is what is it 5G and beyond? Look at this. Extracting all people's private biometrics for quantum AI super intelligence that endangers all human beings on 5G and 6G networks. But what the fuck is 6G? Because 5G is all bad. 5G got that rony. What does 6G come with? What is 5G and beyond, my noggin? Man, what is 5G and beyond? I even thought I saw 7G technology with 5G and 6G systems that can eliminate and destroy all the world's people through national state conflicts or viruses, my naga, 5G, 6G viruses, 5G, 6G viruses. Five, now, what's 5G and beyond? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh-oh, further or failure to prevent or willfully engaging in theft of the world's private family data and biometric data to build quantum AI bio-digital technologies with the goal of obtaining artificial general intelligence or super intelligence on 5g 6g drum roll please and 7g system what the fuck is 7g that threatens all the world's citizens beyond the comprehension and control of any government the pentagon cia all that stuff or any world power ignoring censoring not reporting, rephrasing, or plagiarizing to create content and reports off the Cyrus hard heart of Cyrus's hard work, findings, and materials. So you gotta recon this Cyrus A. Parson. But for real, for real, 5G, 6G, 7G, and all I'm asking you, my noggin, all, all we asking my noggin is why are they in Congress just passing in January 2020? The 5G and Beyond Act of 2020. So that they can have a, a strategy to secure and protect 5G systems and beyond, my naga, and beyond, and beyond, man. So y'all keep staying up, y'all keep suiting up, and y'all keep choosing up, and we will be beyond this madness real soon. Don't even trip. We nine above the barrier. Allow. Wow.